Hey everybody! Welcome in to Nesson.com's The Spread, uh, our, uh, our very little on uh, football picks video podcast, is that what we're calling it? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, it's the last show, we might as well find something to call it. Season we should finale. probably settle on something. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, season finale, we're going to make our, our Super Bowl picks. Uh, welcome back in, thanks for joining us. Uh, for anyone who's joined us throughout the season, good or bad, and there's been plenty of bad uh, in terms of feedback. Yes. Uh, people I think are, are hate watching it, but yeah. at least they're watching it, so we thank you for that. Um, we're going to, you know, a little bit of a special show, a Super Bowl show. Uh, we're going to blow it out a little bit. We're going we're gonna to get into a game pick. We're going to do that off the top. We'll do a little over-under. We'll do a little, uh, some prop bets uh, with the, the Super Bowl. Always a fun time. Uh, a lot of different things. We'll talk a little Gatorade, uh, and then we'll get out of here, hopefully uh, pretty quick. Before we do that, a little Gatorade. We'll talk a little Gatorade. Yeah. What if it's Powerade? You know, no, I think it's Gatorade. It's probably Gatorade. Yeah, I think it's an NFL sponsor, thing, yeah. yeah. Um, you guys are already ruling out clear. You know, like it's going to be H2O. Well, it might be. It might be, but it might be like you know, milk? Pepsi Crystal. <laughs> the field. This is when you take the field. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll get, get all sport in there. Before we get to that. We'll be cramping uh, up. <laughs> Let him talk. Ah, I know. It's not early. <laughs> I hate you guys. Yes. It's so it's the last week you gotta deal with this. It's the only right? time that you, you, it should be a celebratory show. Until next preseason, you're gonna have to deal with this. How did uh, how did you do last week? Oh, <laughs> we, you don't want to know. Why don't we just skip that portion? <laughs> yeah, let's just skip that. We portion. didn't win. Yeah. We, we all went on two. We picked the same thing, and uh, it, I it was uh, you know I still would do the same. Like, I got you know I mean I guess with the benefit of hindsight I wouldn't make the same picks, but. Uh, you guys want to talk about last week real quick? Uh, yeah, yeah I mean, very we'll briefly. Kind of sprinkle it in, but uh, two horrible games is what it came down to. I, I well, I was right on one account. I said the. Yeah, I was good. I actually <laughs> meant to say that. Yeah, your bold prediction was technically right. But <laughs> yeah, right, right. yeah I said that the both games will be decided by uh, more than two touchdowns, and I was right. True. But I said the Packers would do my two touchdowns, and the yeah. the Texans. Not the, the Texans, Steelers. the Steelers are doing my two touchdowns. And, uh, yeah, those are very wrong. It was reverse, yeah. but it was two touchdowns, so I'll say that. Uh, I, I think it's, it's, there's no debate the two best teams in football are, are meeting in the Super Bowl. The, the Atlanta Falcons and New England Patriots, for those of you who are not well, I think the Raiders might have had something to say about that if Derek Carr didn't Yeah, but hurt. Derek Carr wasn't. Like, I mean, that's right also now the two best teams. last week that the Chiefs were the best team in football. I, I still think they were the best team in football. So you're just not ready to that's come so to grips dumb. with the, uh, Why? the Super Bowl matchup. Because, I mean, look at the four, the four championship game teams. We had uh, the Atlanta Falcons, the New England Patriots, the Green Bay Packers, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. What do all of those teams have in common? They all had better quarterbacks than Alex Smith. Yes, exactly. But I can make the argument that the Chiefs had the best t- uh, defense from all those teams. Defense wins yeah, championships. Fine, but they're, they're, they scored 16 points at home against a Pittsburgh team that the, the Patriots just blew up this past Yeah, week. yeah. So. But look, you're right, yeah. I don't know. Got to score points to win. But it's just one bad week. Maybe the oh, best of I seven mean, series they would have won. Sure. Maybe. Probably not, though. Underwhelming championship week, by the yeah, way. Yeah, we sat in. We, 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 we had excited. really high expectations I, for both games. I was over the moon excited for uh, the two games. And it is to say, didn't live up to my expectations. Yeah. Packers, but here we are. Uh, Packers chasing 17 points like midway through the first half. Yeah. Like, we could have a long, uh, long Sunday on our hands because I did think that that Steelers game had a chance to be a blowout. Sure enough, it was. I'm uh, I'm equally as excited for this game though. This, this is, is a very good match. The more I dig into match, this, yeah. and I think that's a good segue. The more I dig into this, uh, this Super Bowl matchup, the New England Patriots against the Atlanta Falcons. Patriots, as it stands right now, and again, a little. This is going to be played throughout the next week. Our our show will be re-promoting it, things like that. We're filming this the week, like there's still 10 days to go before this <laughs> right, game, so Sunday. a lot can change. There could be injuries in practice, there could be line movements, but as it stands right now, we're going into this. Yeah, there could be arrests. Eugene could be Robinson. going down to Tijuana. Uh, right, yeah. we, we, People we just disappearing. We've seen craziness yep. before. <laughs> <laughs> Super Bowl week, anything can happen. Yeah. But as it stands right now, the Patriots are three-point favorites. We're going to make all of our picks off of that. The over-under, we'll make a pick on that. We're going to go off of 58.5. As always, we're getting those figures from OddShark.com. We'll get in some trends as well from OddShark. Be sure to check them out. They've been great to us all season. Well, Johnny OddShark has been uh, unveiling some awesome stuff yep. this week. You all have to go yeah, check they, it out. They've been, they've been stacked. They've been stacked over there. A lot yeah. of good, good stuff. Good content by Johnny OddShark and Joey OddShark <laughs> and the entire staff. Just insert name on track. Uh, before we get into really breaking down the matchup, Atlanta went, this year went 12-6 and six against the spread. The Patriots, this is absurd. This is incredible. Patriots 15 and 3 against the spread. Two of the losses, the game that they lost. So they they failed to cover in one win all season. That's 
You don't see that very often. Yeah, I mean, I was wrong about the Patriots. Let's, I let's keep, say that. I keep, like, my picks against the spread for the Patriots this season were probably horrible. Yeah. Because I know on a handful of accounts, including last week, including the week before, I picked against them against the spread. So I... I haven't learned my lesson. You consider yet. those spreads too. I mean, there are weeks where these are pretty gargantuan spreads. Yes. So yeah. the fact that they're covering even in those weeks, I mean, it, it speaks. To this, I mean, this team. You don't have to. It's pretty obvious they've been a model of consistency uh, over the you know past decade yeah. plus, but especially this season. But I mean, I think we're kind of underselling how good this team, how great this team could be in the uh, historical context. No, oh, yeah, I, uh, let's slow down here. Let's let's not forget that the, the list of quarterbacks the Patriots beat in the second <laughs> half. Of the season. Just, yeah. But they did prove to me that they're a legitimate team by going out and destroying a very good Pittsburgh Steelers team. I understand Le'Veon Bell was banged up, but D'Angelo Williams isn't a joke. I understand Ben Roethlisberger. I still feel like something's wrong with him. The guy in his last eight games or so, ten interceptions. Yeah. He, he he's contemplating retirement now. Uh, I don't think he will retire. I think it's just the uh, as you mentioned, Mike Cole yesterday. I think it's probably some kind of ploy to get better talent around him. Yeah, but still, he 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 didn't look good the last seven eight weeks of the season. So, but still, it was a big win against a tough opponent. Uh, now they're facing another tough opponent. I, I think they've proved to me that they're for real. Yeah, and I think the you know the the one real big matchup that's going to stand out here is uh, probably I mean that's again we we're going to get into the layers of this, but I think the big thing that stands out for me at least initially is what that Falcons offense is able to do against the Patriots defense. Yes. And you look at this Falcons offense, you know, either number one or two across the board in just about every statistic, uh, offensive statistic, including scoring. But here's the thing: uh, ESPN's Charles Woodson pointed this out. Uh, earlier this week, teams who led the NFL are in scoring are one in five in the Super Bowl since 2000. Uh, and ESPN Stats and Info pointed out that this is the sixth time that the uh, the team that led the NFL in scoring faces a team that allowed the fewest points. The Patriots are the best. I don't think Charles defense. Woodson pointed that out. Uh, I'm pretty sure Johnny Ottshark. Johnny Ottshark might have had it as well. Yeah, I'm just showing off. I'm going Johnny <laughs> Um But this is the sixth time that the, it's out there. Right? The sixth time that we'll the team, the sixth time that the best scoring team has faced the best scoring defense. The top five or the top defense won out in four of the previous five. That's a long way of saying when we get into these situations, and we've seen it with the Patriots before. Two thousand one obviously stands out. The Patriots' first uh, Super Bowl win. Good defense beats a good offense. Do we think Atlanta has the offense to? to do you, is this a bad matchup for Atlanta? I guess yeah. Is a, yeah. I think so. I think are, I, are we starting with the picks now? No, what? we can. Let's just kind of we'll get into it. Right, right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I I think it is a bad matchup and. and if Atlanta wins, Johnny Ottshark said that if in his uh, in uh, one of his picks content today on Ottshark, um, he said Atlanta if they win, t- their defense ranked twenty seventh. They'd have the worst scoring defense to win the Super Bowl in the new playoff era. So I, I don't think this is the type of defense that's going to go out and beat the Patriots. I'm sorry. I mean the P- Patriots, whatever. They weren't the number one ranked offense, but they're a pretty damn good offense. It's the Patriots. Tom Brady. One of the greatest quarterbacks we've ever seen. I like how I posed the question about the Falcons' offense. No, I, I thought yeah, you were talking about. It takes it into a complete. Uh, I thought you were talking about the Falcons' defense against the Patriots' no, offense. No, no. Okay. But no, you, well, that makes some valid points but, but, as well. See, what I find interesting is that the Falcons' offense will get theirs. I think. See, that's I think that's the interesting. Whether that happens or not is up to be you know up for debate. Well, I and I, I think it's. You know, <laughs> we've sat here week after week trying to figure out what to make of this Patriots defense. And there are so many weeks where you're like, oh, this is kind of a show-me game for the defense. This is an opportunity for them to say, you know, we are kind of in the you know, upper echelon of defenses across the NFL. And if for whatever reason, week after week, it's still hard to get that sense. I mean, even yep. in the Steelers game. Right. They were pretty bend no break, which is kind of like their, you know, their, their mantra, but kind of what they've been all about this season. Yep. And... The way you could, you know, pick out certain plays in that game. The couple of drops from uh, the Steelers' young receivers. Obviously, Bell being out didn't help the, the Steelers' offense as well. So there's still things you can take away from that game and say, all right, the Patriots' defense played well against the Steelers' offense is pretty good. But they also had the benefit of the Steelers kind of shooting themselves yeah. in the foot yeah. on certain occasions. But so we're still here, one game see, up the, the season, I think trying Atlanta, to figure out what the Patriots' defense I think Atlanta is. can shoot themselves in the foot, too. I the agree. only guy I with agree. Super Bowl experience on that entire team is Dwight Freeney. The uh, the Patriots, um, or excuse me, yeah, the Patriots haven't faced uh, again. You talked about the quarterbacks. Sure, they faced. A, they haven't faced a team with this much offensive depth all season. No. 
even the team. This is a whole different piece. You know, and we've heard a lot of talk about how Bill Belichick likes to take away your number one and maybe even your number two weapons. Did a good job of that last week by taking away Antonio Brown and getting Le'Veon Bell to get hurt, right. which just worked out well for him. Um, <laughs> like with the mystique of uh, Foxborough. But like, yeah. But even if you take away Julio Jones this week, which is going to be a huge point of uh, emphasis for the Patriots, and even if you're able to take away both Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman, if you just eliminate those guys out of the backfield, which maybe you put Patrick Chung on, on especially Coleman. Coleman is I think he's like an X factor in this game. I think coming out of the backfield, he's he's a guy who I mean, when he gets at least three receptions, Atlanta is seven and one this season, scoring thirty six point four points per game when he gets at least three receptions. So he's a big part of their game plan, yeah. or at least should be. You take him away, even if you take away the two running backs and you take away Jones, you still have to deal with a pretty good host of receivers outside of those guys. I mean, Mohamed Sanu has been <laughs> Kyle Shanahan and Matt Ryan have done a, a terrific Mohamed job of, of yeah, really yeah. making him an impact player. Uh, Gabriel on the outside is a big play of threat too. So this they haven't faced a, an offense like this. I agree, um, but at the at the same time, I, I it's just that inexperience is an issue for me. But here's the thing is about that. that. It, I he, here's the thing. Patriots, 22 players with Super Bowl experience. The Falcons only have four. Uh, in the teams I thought it was just Dwight Freeman. Teams with less experience. This is from NFL, NFL's research or whatever. Teams with less experience have won seven of the last ten Super Bowls. Not to just totally shoot you down. You don't get board, experience just, unless you get there. You know? I understand like that. Bill Belichick himself uh, downplayed the importance of experience, what, two weeks ago? I understand yeah, exactly, that. Exactly, yeah. So, but, I, this is, but this is the Patriots. With that experience, right? And you know what? I'm sick of betting against the Patriots yeah. and losing. I'm done with it. I'm not going to go down three straight weeks in a row. I'm picking the Patriots in this game with that three point spread. I'm making my pick now. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good that's stat about it with Coleman though, because that is the one thing I think for me, from a defensive standpoint for the Patriots, that kind of gives me reason for pause, scares me a little bit. Is how much are they going to give up to you know in the receiving game to these backs out of the backfield? You know, two headed monster obviously in Freeman and Coleman, uh, right? Twentieth in. Defending running backs in a passing game, according to Football Outsiders. Yep. So that I mean, I just feel like you can put a lot of stock into Julio Jones and the deep ball. But if I'm, you know, Atlanta, I'm going to try and work those backs out of the backfield. Yep. Similar to what I think the Steelers wanted to do with Le'Veon Bell, right. obviously didn't really yep. get that opportunity. That would that's what it has to be. And and also this game again, this is a cliche. It's going to come down to what both teams are able to do within the side inside the twenty. The Patriots have, uh, I think I have it written down here. I, I forget what it was. They have uh, they have a top ten red zone defense. Uh, Atlanta, I think, is a top ten red zone offense. And again, so in Atlanta's red zone defense is terrible, whereas the Patriots obviously can be down there. So it's it all comes down again. There's not a whole. This isn't very scientific, but on both sides of the ball, Atlanta needs to be making sure that when they get in the red zone, they're getting seven, and when they get the Patriots in the red, and the Patriots get the ball in the red zone, Atlanta has to at least two or three times make the Patriots settle for a field goal. That's the only, I think when you start looking at the matchup, the only way Atlanta wins this game, I think, is if they score a lot of points, because I still think both teams are going to get theirs. So it's going to be that one or two stop in the red zone where they can make the Patriots settle for three as opposed to seven, and they have to cash in on the other two. They're going to have to be, like, you know, however many possessions they get, they're really going to have to take advantage of those possessions. Again, that's not, that sounds very simplistic well, I mean, and fundamental, but... But, hey, look, no but I don't think they're not going to get. They're not going to get the hey, big plays. I don't think that. Can I say this? Right I think the thing. Falcons are the easiest defensive team that the Patriots have faced in th- this playoffs. They put up thirty something points against the Texans. Yep. They put up thirty something points against right. the Steelers. Now they're playing this really bad defensive team, who's meh in terms of getting pressure on the quarterback. They have guys that can get to the quarterback. Great. But so did the Texans, yep. and so did the Steelers. And those guys did get to the quarterback. The Steelers had a couple sacks. They put some pressure on Tom Brady. But the Patriots still put up a bunch of points. So the same thing's right. going to happen here. Especially, guess what? The weather's not going to be a factor in Houston. That that works out to Brady's advantage because, you know, with, uh, Matt Ryan always plays in the Dome, and, you know, I'm sure he'll like that as well. But I'm pretty sure Brady's going to be happy yeah. about the fact he doesn't have to be in the elements. I, I'm going to use this whole conversation to kind of pivot into my pick I'm also I'm gonna take the Patriots uh and it comes down to again fundamental things it's I think it comes down to tackling for me which yeah. is again when you really just say it sounds stupid on its own as a sentence yeah. I think whoever tackles better wins the football game it's like well yeah no kidding <laughs> gotta get the guy on the ground but I, I, I looked this up today I think this is a really big statistic for me uh yards after catch uh both the Patriots and the Falcons ranked in the top three in yards after catch offensively now, here's the big difference. The Patriots ranked first defensively in yards after catch. The Falcons ranked 
thirty second. That is last that NFL. Is, that that now, that is, is the yeah, sad of the definition year. Definition of two opposite ends I, of the I spectrum. can I can already hear Falcons fans typing away saying, "Yeah, a lot of that was in garbage time." Sure, it was fine, but the Patriots don't give up the. I I would be shocked to see. Julio Jones get loose for a 73-yard touchdown like we saw this past I, I, week. I against. think there'll be a lot of garbage time in this Super Bowl. I don't think it's going to be a close game at all. I think <laughs> you the Patriots, already go there. No, it's, oh, it's going it's, the other way. Yeah, the Patriots no, but what, gonna, I'm, what I'm saying is the, the I would say the Falcons would say a lot of those those yards after catch numbers have come in garbage time and the Falcons are up by a lot. And so I think that they probably try to minimize it that way. But I just, you, you kind of look at it too, the Dan Quinn thing, where Dan Quinn was the defensive coordinator for the, page, or for the Seahawks when the, the Patriots beat the Seahawks in Super Bowl 49 a couple years ago. You go back to that game, real, I think you do, if, you know, if Atlanta tries to do the same thing as Seattle did, they're not going to have much success, granted, because Seattle's not, or this Atlanta team is not nearly as good defensively as that Seattle team was. And you go back and look at that game, uh, it's New, York, New England had 159 yards after the catch on 28 receptions in that game. A lot of real short dump-offs, little quick slants. Uh, again, this is from ESPN Stats and Information. Brady completed 28, passes, 28 of 32 passes for 194 yards and two touchdowns on passes traveling within five yards of the line of scrimmage wow. in that game. I think it's, the, it's a similar game plan here. I kind of dug into this. Uh, MMQB had a great breakdown of what the Falcons have done defensively over the course of the season. Their defense has gotten better. They've made adjustments. They love this is a Dan Quinn staple, the cover three zone defense. I don't think you can do that against the Patriots. You just can't. We saw that last week. The Steelers played zone all game. Brady picked them apart. He's going to pick them apart again here. So what is, you know, how do you fix that? How have they fixed that as the season went on? According to this MMQB story, they got their linebackers and safeties especially to come back off the line of scrimmage. You do that, the Patriots have the versatility to give the ball to LeGarrette Blunt and beat you on the ground. Or if you come up and press them on the line, they still have the big play capability of Chris Hogan. You know, we've seen it the last two weeks. They've taken a lot more shots downfield than we're used to seeing. The only chance I think Atlanta has is to generate that pressure on the quarterback and win in man-to-man situations, and I'm not sure they're able to do that with well, how healthy the Patriots I, I, are offensively. One quick point, and I agree with you completely, is what have I said about the Oakland Raiders defense all year long? They allow tons of yards, but how do they mask that yep. deficiency? Forcing turnovers. That's what the Falcons did all year long. They allow a ton of yards, but they had one of the best uh, turnover differentials in football. They um, was plus 11 or something like that. Very, very good oh, both turnover teams. Both teams take care of the football. I, mean, I, don't I understand that, but, but that's what I'm saying. The Patriots aren't going to turn over the ball. You're not going to see Tom Brady throwing picks. Uh, so, sorry, Atlanta. You know, yeah. you're... you're, you're that, that, that's how Atlanta's only chance is. They're, they're going to have to. Yep. Deion Jones is going to have to have the best <laughs> game of his life. Pick off Tom Brady a few times. Be the Dexter Jackson of the 2016 Super Bowl 51. You know what Dexter Jackson did in the Bucks Raiders? Yes, <laughs> I know. Very yeah. well away, yeah. So he needs to be the Dexter Jackson of this uh, Super Bowl. So uh, I don't know if that's going to yeah, happen. Though. I just don't see it. And again, happen. Atlanta giving up touchdowns on three out of four red zone trips defensively. The red zone defense is terrible. I mean, I think the Patriots get down to the score points. Again, I think it's a close game, but I'm still taking the Patriots to cover the three points. Maybe they win by four or five just because at the end, I, again, this is why I almost took Atlanta last week before wavering back and probably made a homer pick by taking the Packers. I thought that the Falcons had a better chance of making play on defense than the, the Packers did last week. Yeah. I think that obviously it speaks for, to what – to the Super Bowl that the Patriots defense has a better chance of making a play or more than one play than the, the Falcons do. Yeah, yeah I, your pick. I, I agree with you, and I, I'm going to go with you guys. I also like the Patriots in this. We're all going to be tied. What's the tiebreaker? We'll have a tie. Yeah, we'll, we'll go to the props. <laughs> right, and and uh, for me, we talked about this a little earlier, Mike, that a lot of this, you know, with the Falcons, both offensively and defensively, is their team speed. This is a quick team, fast team. Uh, and I'm Frantic. not. And yeah, that's lot, the thing. I'm not so sure on. in a game like this, that's the best trait to have. I think a lot of this, you're gonna be able to tell a lot. I think in the first few minutes of this game, yeah. I think for New England, it might be a matter of kind of almost like a boxer weathering a, a flurry of punches in the beginning, and get you know get that offense off the field, and then put together one of the you know more methodical drives that you're known for as a New England offense. Because I think that you're right. I think you can give the ball to Garrett Blunt and kind of jam it down your throats. The numbers suggest you know. Falcons run defense hasn't been that great this year. Right, which doesn't uh, get exposed much because they play from ahead, but that's the exactly, thing. If this, yes. pack, if this Patriots defense is able to slow them down early, it opens up the... Yeah, right. I mean, no, really, you can slice it several ways. Run defense, uh, yards per carry, 26th. Uh, yards per game, 17th. This is in the regular season. Uh, but also, if you look, you dive deeper with football outsiders, you know, they have the 
you know, slice it down a little bit more. 29th ranked against the run. Patriots on the flip side, fourth against the run. So while we want to put all the emphasis on these two quarterbacks, these two high-powered offenses, I think a lot of this could come down to the running games and the Patriots' and you know ability to keep that Atlanta offense off the field. Because while I think Atlanta's offense is more explosive, I think we, we probably all would agree with that. Yep. From a playmaker standpoint, I, I think that they just – they can just they can hit you. That they can hit the home run. They like it's they can put it up to. It can be fourteen nothing quicker in the blink of an eye. Exactly. With them than it would be. With the Patriots game. more methodical, more more up to chew up the clock. I think. And in a game like this, where you're gonna come out, the adrenaline's gonna be flowing. I just think that that works in the Patriots' favor. And this maybe this is where the experience thing comes into play. I think if you're Atlanta, you're gonna want to be flying all over the but field. But that's the thing. I'm you so may, you came with it. You said Atlanta's gonna come out and like fly. Uh, no pun intended. They're yeah. <laughs> not, right. not actually fly, but like you said, they're going to come out fast. I don't know. I think they'll be a little bit hesitant. It's a Super Bowl. It's a lot of these guys' first Super Bowl. And what I've kind of noticed is in that Steelers game, the second the Patriots went up three nothing in that game, I kind of sense the Steelers being in a little panic mode. That first drive, third and one, they decide to go for a home run pass instead of handing the ball out yeah. to Le'Veon Bell and getting a first down. Hindsight is twenty twenty. If they connected, I was like, oh wow, Mike Tomlin's a genius. But I don't know, it was a little bit of a panic move there. Well, I feel like the Falcons might do the same. See, yeah. No, I, I thought you were going a different direction. No. There. I, and the, that's the thing with these off- these high-powered offenses. The Falcons have scored, what, like 35 points for the last two months, yeah. it seems, every game. You, you make them punt twice to start the game. Really? Oh, my God. I, it's a, oh, my God. Oh my God. They, they're in an unfamiliar <laughs> position. Yeah. All right. Before we get into the over-under, how – because, again, we're going to hear it. We're going to – Falcons fans have been already vocal, especially. I mean, they're all over my Twitter feed because I tweeted out that that yards after catch. Uh, yeah, that, that was just, just, um, I was going to say tweet it out. I didn't realize you very already grumpy had. already. So let's talk about real quick before we get into this. How did the Falcons win this game? We kind of touched on it already. How realistic is there? I don't want to totally dismiss them, is what I'm saying. I think there's no, I there's don't, certainly I'm not a blueprint I'm not for doing the Falcons that at all. win this game. I'm dismissing them, yeah. I, yeah, you, you did. Well, that yeah, should yeah. be the best news Falcons fans hear all week because <laughs> yeah. you get really defined. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that might be – yeah, you're right. <laughs> exactly. So, but, but let me just say one thing. Julio Jones can be stopped. Yeah. He can be stopped. There have been eight times this season where he's been held under 100 yards. I think the Patriots are the type of team that can hold him to uh, under 100 yards. You're not going to see Benet Ben Wickery <laughs> guarding uh, Julio Jones. And he's probably not going to get 300 yards this time. Exactly. Benet Ben Wickery is not in this game. Um, he was not last year's Super Bowl, though, when the yeah. Carolina Panthers. But that's beside the point. Um, so what, what, do you say? what is your question? What do the Falcons need to do to win this game? I don't know. I, I think, you know, Vic Beasley needs to hit Tom Brady really hard in the first quarter and knock him out it's, of the game. They, they have <laughs> to do something big on defense. I think that's the biggest thing is that they need a big play early on, whether it's – and it doesn't even need to be a turnover, but you're right. It has to be Vic Beasley, you know, eats Tom Brady's Strip lunch. Sack. Or – or Keanu Neal gets yeah. know, Danny Can we say coming something? across the middle. The Falcons allowed 37 sacks this year. It's 22nd. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of sacks. And the Patriots pass rush, I think they're going to be able to get to Matt Ryan in this game. I don't know. I just The, the Patriots pass rush doesn't it does well against much. bad offensive lines. I, I suppose. I suppose. But we haven't seen them. They, they've They've been a little dormant the last few weeks. Well, they were up sure. against the Steelers, one of the best pass protection. Big thing here, Alex Mack, uh, Falcon center, injured uh, injured his ankle last week in the, in the NFC Championship, left for one play, came back. He's not going to practice this entire first week, nor is Julio Jones. And I don't think anybody's questioning Jones' availability. But the Mack injury is big. You lose your starting center, a veteran guy like that, that changes a lot, yeah. especially in a big situation like that. So who knows? Can I just add one more thing before we move on? Isn't it amazing, the Patriots, they sign random guys like Kyle Van Noy and Eric Rowe. I remember these guys got signed in the middle of the season, and it was like the highest trending thing on our traffic on our website. And I, who are these guys? Why do people care so much about these guys being signed? And they both make impactful plays in important games. Why do they do that all the time? It make, this is the reason why I hate the Patriots. It's they, like, uh, it's just, it is what it is. You know, they, they, they're... <laughs> I, yeah, it is. It's it's unbelievable. It is, really think about yeah, it but, but but more power to them. Respect. Yeah, to think they traded away a guy who just landed a fifty million dollar contract too. You yeah. know what I mean? That's just. I hope he has a hell of a Super Bowl party. You know, he certainly has the financial means to do so now. Um, but yeah, Mike, to, you, to your point of what the what the Falcons got to do to win this game, yep. uh, I think for me at least it goes back to what I was saying earlier about 
uh, using those, utilizing those secondary options out of the backfield, kind of, you know. I think that's hope what that Tevin the, Coleman needs to have a big game. Exactly, right? you know, Coleman, Freeman, uh, Taylor Gabriel. I mean, hope that there's so much of an emphasis on Julio Jones and Mohamed Sanu that you can kind of, you know, expose the the middle of the field and you know make plays in space. You get those guys at the second level. They, I mean, they're as good as you know any running back tandem in football. Yep. So what's that old Greek story? It's bird flies too close to the sun, the wings melt. That's what happened to the Falcons. They peaked too high. It's Greek. I mythology. think you called it cute, adorable. You might have even. It was a cute story. Yeah. It was a cute. Story, yeah. It was a <laughs> Bill right. Belichick is going to be clipping some wings yeah, right. On the Battle of the Birds though Icarus I think. Is Icarus, right. yeah. yeah, yeah, there you go uh, Alright, let's do over-under Again, set at about 58, 58 and a half points right now I love uh, it To the uh, both went over, We hit both overs yeah. last week uh, That Packers-Falcons game blew by it Despite the fact that the Packers were shut out for a quarter and a half Or more, whatever it was um, So 58 and a half I'm leaning toward the over. Again, I think that the the page and maybe it's a late score that kind of gets it there. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what the, what my score would be. I yeah, I could see this being 34-27. How's that sound? Thereabouts. 34-27. I think is probably what I would go. So I'd I think, think you have a weird score. That's barely hitting the over, but I'll take. You that have over. a safety in this game somewhere. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna take uh, one of the, the pa- uh, Patriots uh, Giants. Yeah, the one, so. and there was one of the Seahawks. Well, that's uh, right. The, the ball over uh, Peyton, Peyton Matt first snap yeah. of the game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll go rogue here. I'll take the under. Okay. I mean, so, I I think if the Patriots win this game, it's much more likely to be again duh, but it's yeah. much more likely to be the under than it would be the over. Because yeah, I think. If from a Patriots standpoint, they'd like to turn this into a little bit of a correct. Grind yeah, like you said they're more equipped slow to do the that. game down with yeah with the you know utilize the running game. You know, well, I can see some some long drives. From if the this Patriots. game gets okay. fast, they're screwed because that's what happened. I think to the Packers last week is the game got way too fast for them right. well, on both sides of the ball. Obviously, defensively, the Packers couldn't hang with uh, the Falcons' offense. But again, you kind of talk. We talk about the defense. There's some speed on that Falcons' defense, so. If the game's moving fast. It's not in the Patriots' uh, advantage. But right. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. So, it, it, exactly. They slow this thing down, and it, yeah, I could see some long drives to the Patriots. Uh, I think if you're Atlanta, you, I mean, it, you you probably want some long drives yourself. Yeah. So, I just think that the, I'm not sure there's going to be enough time to score, uh, you know, 58 and a half points. I think that we're kind of overselling yeah. these guys I, getting a little bit I of a rhythm. I agree with you, it's just, it's, If you're the Patriots, I think defensively you want to you wanna turn it into a, to a grind. Uh, offensively, too. I'm going to go with but the under. Well, one, one thing you guys are completely Taylor's. overlooking is that the Falcons this year are 16-2 and two on overs, uh, which means it's got, that, that's not sustainable. It has yeah, to so, regress back to... So is to the Patriots 15-3 and three against the spread record sustainable? No, because... No. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Well, you're saying no, it is. No. Yeah. Uh, that's different, though. But th- because that's the Patriots are still sure, really yeah, good. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I get, no, I, just, I get you. But I think over under is more of a you don't really control no, that. It's more of a lottery thing. It's like the, Bill Belichick doesn't go into the game saying oh, we're gonna have to hit the over today, <laughs> but he goes into a game saying we need to win the football game. I think over under is more of a fifty fifty proposition than than covering the spread when you're the Patriots. So I'm gonna go with the the under on this one, just based on what you guys said, but also sixteen and two. I mean that has to. Regress at some point. <laughs> to that point, <laughs> so we, uh, they're giving you a lot of wiggle room before yeah. they regress, though. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I mean, right? At least like your Russell point. Wilson theory. Is Listen, when you're at the roulette table, bad <laughs> game. This is I'll give you a 16 good game. When you're at the roulette uh, table uh, and it's 16 consecutive black, yeah, it's gonna be red the next Ride time. Ride it right? out. Yeah. No, no, no. Ride you go red. Uh, you know, it's kind of uh, just a few kind of uh, trends to, to go off. I'm probably gonna go to the same uh, exact thing. Yeah. I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. We do get it from the same source. Yeah, exactly. We just basically Falcons have topped the uh, that fifty eight the what was it fifty eight and a half? Yep. They topped that number in the game eight times a season. Patriots have gone over fifty eight point five just once in in their game. So this is I think that just speaks to really how crazy high this number is. Obviously the highest in Super Bowl history. Uh it was the highest going in this one. The Saints Colts Super Bowl, right? I, I think, think so, the, yeah. uh, was the record until this year. So I, I just think that's a that's a big number. That's a really big number. Yeah. Um, the uh, again, this is according to Odd Shark. The total the, the total has gone under in three of the Patriots' last four Super Bowls as well. They How about the Ravens and 49ers Super Bowl? Two battle among defensive titans. 34-31 final score. <laughs> I I think a lot of this too with this number. I bet the over under for that was like forty five or something. <laughs> plays into just the the narrative of two high powered offenses yeah, that can't be true. stopped. To the point where they were like, well, we can really jack this. But we up. thought that last week in that Packers Falcons game, 
and it still hit the over despite yeah. the Packers not doing anything for true. pretty much the entire but first But see, half. can't you see, like... Because I think, like, no, I see Atlanta getting a garbage time touchdown to really push the, maybe... That's where I'd be afraid if I had the under. I'd be sweating that out. I, like, I, I, I say 34-20. Patriots win. Wow, okay. That's a good score. Patriots put up a bunch of points. Falcons put up a decent amount of points. Hey, 34-20. See, that's the thing. Yeah, you right. take that, still and under. I'm taking that. I'm fine. It'll be 34-20, and then the, the Falcons will get that seven late. And no, no, it'll be 34-13, and the, the, oh, the Falcons will get oh, that right. seven late. Like, she just said they're going to score a lot of points. And you say oh, that's still a lot of points. Lot of points. <laughs> Not for the With Falcons. Like it's a lot of points for the Rams, though. <laughs> 20 points. They, I don't think they were able to put that up in a single game this year. Um, any other uh, over-under comments? No. Let's move on to the fun part. I'm going to say 30-24 is my final, though. Okay. Patriots. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right, Just while we're throwing numbers around, you know. Or over here with that TI-84 calculators, carrying ones and whatnot. So wait, let's keep track points. of this. You said, what did you say, Mike? What? Your score. Uh, 37. Uh, yeah, we can check the table. 34-27. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Why are you Ricky, you were 34. We were literally recording 30, this. 30, 30, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. You've got to get it on the racket. 30-24. <laughs> I yeah. was. <laughs> doesn't want any of us changing it. 34-20 <laughs> is what I said. Okay. All right, cool. All right. I'm going to change mine to 3720. Do you have the props open? Uh, yeah. All I right. Do. Why don't you yeah, hit us with the props? props? I haven't looked at it right. really. All right. First one. We want to do MVP or we'll do that at the end? No, let's do MVP now. Oh, yeah, we do MVP Just now. Sorry. Right. Uh, hey, guys, Mike. <laughs> Go ahead. You start. MVP? Yeah. I'm going, you know, obvious choice. <laughs> I gotta go with Brady too. It's like yeah, this the narrative Brady. Yeah. that this whole season has played out so. And again, everybody, like smart people, stats-driven people, love to talk about. Oh, the narrative is so dumb. Like the narrative is played out so much to this point. It just seems too perfect or too obvious for it not to be Brady yeah. wins the MVP, wins the Super Bowl, comes back Monday morning, has the awkward press conference with where Goodell has to give him the MVP trophy. Oh. It just. Yeah, I, 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 unless, like, I don't see the defense winning them yeah. the game. I think they're going to put up a lot of points. I think it, it has to be and like, like okay, goes off if he throws three touchdowns and they're well, all to Edelman, do you give it to Edelman no, or do you give it, it to Brady? Just, no, you give it to Brady. It's going to go to the quarterback. The it's only way Brady doesn't get it is if LeGarrette Blunt has a Colts type of game where he runs off with like four touchdowns. Because I could see a, a scenario where <laughs> they get down in there and then as he racked up these eight. 18 touchdowns in the regular season just kind of falling forward, basically. <laughs> I can see him falling bad, his way into about three or four touchdowns. I guess a bad red zone defense. Yeah, yeah. so bad run I can defense. see something like... And also it's a good value pick. I'm, that's that's value. why I'm another one. I'm picking it as a value pick here. because uh, By the way, let's five. give him a round of applause. You picked the Falcons to go to the Super Bowl. I picked the Patriots. Yeah, I know the Super Bowl. yeah Chiefs Falcons, right? It always, <laughs> that's uh, an obvious pick. That's all right. It was in the bird. It was in the bird family. Oh, the Cardinals. Speaking of the Falcons being yeah. in the Super yeah. Bowl, uh, big ups to Odd Shark. Uh, if, if the Falcons win, that's the other thing, too. I'm not being yeah. a homer or anything. If the Falcons win this game, I win like 1300 bucks thanks to my buds at Odd Shark. So, uh, By the way, great way to close out the Georgia Dome. Yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> yeah, still, a little, still a little butthurt about it. Uh, another value pick, MVP, Julian Edelman. If the Patriots <laughs> win this game and Edelman returns like a punt for a touchdown, that's how hey, you get into the receiver. Yeah. Go back to Super Bowl 31, Desmond Howard, you know, one of those. That's I think that's, like, the only way. That or if you catch, yeah. like, yeah, 15 that was like, passes. Like that was, like, the Branch. 90s and the 80s. Well, it's hot, yeah. It's and they would give, like, the kickers the MVP The Deion Branch <laughs> Super Bowl MVP, he won one year. And then he didn't win another yeah. year. We had, like, 13. It's just so you got to <laughs> really put up big numbers. Plus the narrative, people are just going to vote. For Brady, Chris Boswell. Quarterback <laughs> is yeah. So I mean, that's you think they'll give it to Goskowski? There's a you want to talk value pick, Matt Bryant. <laughs> oh, oh, this is oh. ends eighteen sixteen. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's the thing. I, you can see it. <laughs> Chris Boswell, remember he, he would have won the MVP. That's the thing. No, like Chiefs that's what you're talking. Yeah. Like betting on the kicker is not the most insane thing if it's two defensively minded teams. Yeah. Because yeah, if you pick an MVP in that Steelers Chiefs game. It's Chris Boswell. So that could have happened in the Super Bowl, right? Like, I don't know. I feel like Bell had a big game, too. Still. <laughs> he had, yeah, like, 500 if you kick, yards. If you got a kicker in the Super Bowl who makes six field goals, and, like, let's say four of them are at least 45 yeah, yards, okay. especially if it was an outdoor game. I mean, Fantasy-wise, it's a huge game. Ryan right. Allen. Remember All fantasy right, football? A lot of coffin corners in this game. <laughs> yeah, I do remember yeah. football. It just doesn't exist anymore. All right, um, All right let's props. go. Let's get props. Let's fly a props. Yeah, let's go quick. How long will Luke Bryan take to sing the national anthem? Two minutes, 15 seconds, over, under. I wish I knew what last year's was, uh, but I hit the It over was two last minutes, uh, 20 seconds last year with Lady uh, Gaga. 
the over seems too obvious. Always, it just seems like such a safe bet. I think yeah, as long as it's not. What, what is the Thanksgiving game this year was Aretha Franklin in Detroit. That was a long one. It was like five minutes long. I'm taking yeah. the. Uh, I'm gonna hit the under. I think Luke Bryan gets in and gets out. Yeah. Yep, I'm under. As long as he doesn't get a frog in his throat or something, and he's he's good. He can do this one take. I'd like to see how minimum. males versus females compare to uh, with the over under. I, I feel like yeah, females have a tendency to be able to hold the note longer. So I, feel I like, yeah. like I don't think Luke Bryan's going to hold the note as long yeah, as Lady exactly. Gaga yeah. did last year. I agree. I'll go with the under with this one. Besides, Luke Bryan seems like Five a, a lot of his it. songs are very quick yeah. too. They're just quick out. Yeah. Boom. All right. I got the United <laughs> he's States. A, uh, you know, yeah. He's a. Uh, He's, yeah, we talk, we've talked about Luke Bryan a lot on this season's spread. Yeah. A lot of disparaging remarks guest, for Luke Bryan. Guest star, <laughs> so, uh, so let's uh, so keep I, going I with the Luke we, Bryan theme. I mean, if it was any other song other than the National Anthem, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't tune in for it. I'd probably yeah, no, just, yeah. He's, he, what so color? The chips what, is he gonna, yeah. what trousers is he going to wear? Jeans or anything else? Jeans. He's going to wear jeans that are, look like they're spray painted on. I, I don't know. I think it's the National Anthem. I think he might I, be wearing a suit. I think he's wearing black jeans. Oh, a suit, Jeez. actually. Yeah, maybe like... It is a national anthem at the Super Bowl. Like a like an award show attire, maybe? He's, he's from Georgia? Or? Oh. Yeah. He, he's going to be ruined for the Falcons. This is, this has got jeans all over. We're in Houston. It's a real cowboy-esque yeah, I think vibe jeans. to it. I think he's wearing jeans. Black jeans. Night boots. B- oh, good, blue jeans or anything boots. else, though. That's that's the, that's the prop. It's well, blue like jeans. wearing chaps. So you're going blue, with black jeans. Black blue, jeans are not blue jeans. Oh, is that like specifically blue yeah, jeans? Yeah, blue jeans versus like, the field. Blue jeans are jeans. Blue jeans, Dumbies. blue. The color blue. blue. Oh, then I'll go with anything else. But I, I'll, yeah, I'll give so you So you're going black else. jeans. Yeah, then. I'll All go, right. Yeah. yeah anything I'm going with anything else too. I'm going with a suit. Right. Yeah, sure. Suit pants. Okay. I'll take the blue jeans. All right. Luke Bryan will be wearing a hat. Right. Yes or no? This I don't understand. <laughs> like to to to. Hey, and what's out? funny is that this is a 50-50 proposition. Holy! I, I need to get out of here and go make a bet. That, that son of a. You know what? Wears a hat while he's singing. The That's national very anthem. un-American. Yeah, I don't agree with that either. Very un-American. It's they say they specifically instruct you to take your hat off. Yes, and he's a good country boy. I'm going with no. Yeah, I don't think he's wearing a hat. No way. Yeah, That's yeah. So dumb. I, 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 I tend to agree. Yeah. But, but, the but like, does that count that he's like if he wears his hat out and then takes it off? Um. Oh. Yes, when he appears on screen before seeing. See, that's a little more confusing. I, I but it's like, why would you bring a hat I if you're going to take it he off? Goes, no, he likes wearing hats. He wears hats a lot. I still think. No, nah, but not all the time. Well, this is weird. Why are we talking, talking about Luke <laughs> Bryan? So just say no. All right, well, one more Luke Bryan one. Will he forget or we'll omit a word from the no. official U.S. national nah, <laughs> no. yeah, I think yeah, he yeah. will. I think, I think he gets he it right. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, you're right. He's a you know Southern American. What word is he gonna miss? I don't know. Someone always messes up. Anyway, it's yes plus four hundred, no minus seven hundred. Oh, Jesus. No, I mean, it might be worth it. Just a. <laughs> it's a good value yeah. pick. He gets a nervous yeah. stage fright. All right. Halftime show. <laughs> Lady Gaga's hair color. Will it be blonde minus 500 or any other color plus 300? Blonde. I'm going with any other colors. Yeah. Lady Gaga. Uh, a lot uh, of strange. She's got to shave it. I think she gets like the white. Is it white count? Like that. White blue? is not blonde. No, she doesn't have like white hair. I think it's going to be blue. Like really blonde? Like really light blonde? I'm going with blue. I go blonde. I'm going other color. I'm right. not. I, I'm not locked. I'm not gonna lock myself into a color. But I'm going other color. All right. All right. One more Lady here. Gaga question. What What is she gonna first song gonna be when she opens up the Super Bowl? Oh, it's Poker Face. That's yeah. a plus one thousand proposition. Yeah, yeah. No, that's it's, that's it's, a, no, a right heavy underdog. I'm, yeah. I'm not entirely. Uh, uh, I have a better chance of yeah. guessing uh, Luke Bryan's catalog than Lady Gaga's catalog. I gotta find this now. I think maybe you and I. Is that uh, the song that she who's sings? Who's the uh, uh, you and I is was that Edge of Glory. Edge of Glory was plus five hundred. What the hell was that one? Uh, should we, should I don't we? know, but uh, Michaela Vernava loved it. Um, you got to think they'll play that Edge of Glory Super Bowl. One body on Does the line. Does she have a new CD coming out? Because then don't you usually don't sometimes know. Just, kick it off with like a one of your new songs and everybody hates you and then you get into the hits? I I I I'm gonna go with the think. field. The Alejandro. 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 That's 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 that that was Michaela Vernava's prediction. That's a terrible. Uh, plus one ten. Any other song. Born This Way is plus 225. Bad Romance plus 250. Edge of Glory plus 600. Poker Face plus 1000. Just Dance plus 1000. I don't know any of those songs, so I don't really Born This Way, come on. La, 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 la. That's, that's, that's Poker Face. Yes, yeah, can't you just imagine her style? Yes, that? I can. You know but I, mean? I can go with any other song. It's just. All right. Anyway. All right, well. All right, last one. Everybody's favorite Gatorade. What color is it going to be? Orange. Going orange? 
Back to back here for orange. Orange is plus 300. I'm going with red. Johnny Oddshark <laughs> did some research and said that it's never been red before. And red is plus 600. Both co teams have red in their color scheme. Falcons red, Patriots red. Red Gatorade is probably the worst tasting Gatorade out there. But Got to get rid of it. Exactly. Yep. Dump it out. I like the red. I like <laughs> what, you're, what you're on to there. It leaves some good stains on those white jerseys of the Patriots. The Color the Falcons' blood. Maybe the uh, maybe you parlay those uh, with Lady Gaga and somebody get to dump it on Lady Gaga and turn her hair red and then red plus red. Yep. Last year was orange, right? You know. It was orange the, uh, last year. Yeah. That has been red, according to uh, OddsShark.com. We've had one, two, three, four oranges, uh, two purples, two yellows, and a whole lot of clear. That would be water. That would be why, yes. <laughs> uh, one, one blue as well. That All was right. the Patriots. The, look at the Patriots' history with their Super Bowls. First time they won no, nothing. They didn't pour anything. Absolutely Second time they won there. nothing. Third time they won clear. Very boring. And then the fourth time they won, they threw uh, some the blue. The third time was the one when you got his uh, Belichick's dad. And they just dumped uh, ice water on the poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> like 100 years old. They just get <laughs> covered in ice water. Yeah. No, uh, that's their Gatorade analysis. No. So, uh... This is it, guys. This is, uh, this is it. Uh, this is uh, this is fun. It was good, very good fun. Year. Good Twenty year. one. We're not weeks. gonna do. We're not gonna do any Pro Bowl uh, yeah, analysis. You don't want to break down the <laughs> dodgeball game. NFC or AFC? Talk about the drones. Got? Who's got the edge in drones? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. All right. That's, well, you guys know where to find me in case you want to talk drones. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's been. Uh, that's the spread. Uh, and no. now the end is near. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I was saying earlier, we're going to have to leave it on a cliffhanger. Uh, maybe a little. Yeah, come back next season. Assume we're all here. Who knows? Yeah. Will we be all here? All of us. Poor, I that should be the last prop. Yeah, we'll all <laughs> yeah, be working here. Still. Uh, yeah. Plus 1,000, I say no. I'll take it. Um, anyway, so. It was a pleasure, guys. <laughs> good game, good game. The Little League. Good game, good it was, game. It was game. really was. It was, it was. You guys aren't shaking hands. It was just. <laughs> Look at this set. Okay, I, know, right? I love it. We better be back home. next year. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Ooh, yeah. we gotta... What will be behind the set next season? That is the question. Anyway, that's it. We're out. We are See out. you guys. Bye. Wait, wait. Wait. Wait.